Syntactically Awesome Style Sheets or SAS is a platform independent CSS preprocessor language which comes with advanced features for styling the web pages. Now why exactly you need this kind of CSS preprocessor? The reason is like in CSS you do not have variables. So SAS will give you the facility to use variables. Not only variables, there are many other features you will be able to use. But this is just for an example that you have features like variables, mixins, etc. It is an extension to CSS, but it's more advanced compared to it. Modern UIs are extremely complex and difficult to build using only CSS, as often you will find yourself repeating the CSS code while styling. SAS comes to the rescue by providing a compiler which allows us to define the style sheet with CSS style coding but with more dynamic programming syntax which eventually gets compiled in normal CSS. The SAS files are created with the .sas or .scss extensions providing a different syntax for style sheets as the semicolons and curly brackets used in normal CSS are no longer used in SAS files. Not only that, the bonus features which come with SAS which are not yet included in CSS are variables, nesting, mixins, inheritance and many other handy built-in features which makes SAS very powerful and useful. That brings me to a question why do we need SAS? So with SAS you can write a clean code which is easy to understand and less CSS in a programming construct. It contains fewer code lines so you can write CSS quicker. It is more powerful and stable as it is an extension of CSS making it efficient and quick for designing and development. Now let's first of all understand how to configure or use SAS in your project. I have created a folder named SAS in which I have defined an HTML file configuring SAS.HTML containing a boilerplate code. Now you have to download an extension called Live SAS Compiler in order to execute the SAS or SCSS files. There are various compilers for various IDEs which help execute the SAS files. But as I am using the VS code, I am going to use this compiler. Also, why do we need a compiler? Because browsers cannot read the SAS files. It only reads the CSS file. So this compiler will convert your SAS file into normal CSS files. So let's create a basic example. Inside the body, I will give a heading configuring SAS in project and a paragraph. Now I will create a SAS file named styles.scss. You can either give .sass that is SAS or SCSS. The only difference between them is of syntax. Like in SAS, curly brackets and semicolons are not needed for defining styles. But in SCSS, as it is an extension to CSS, it follows the same syntax which we give in normal CSS styles. And generally the SCSS extension is used more for defining SAS files. Alright, so let me define styles for body and h1. You can see the styles are not getting displayed in the output because as I have said, the browsers cannot read the SAS files. It can only read the CSS files. So this is where the compiler comes in. If you observe the status bar, you can see the option watch says. I'll click on it and now the compiler is active. You can tell that by looking at these files. The compiler has created two new files that is styles.css and styles.css.map. So basically says file is converted to CSS. If I click on the CSS file, you can see it is exactly the same as the SAS file. Finally, I will add the link to the CSS file inside the HTML document. And you can see 
the styles getting applied in the output. So this is how you can set your SAS files in a project. SAS provides a feature called variables. Variables are used to store the information that can be reused throughout the style sheet. You can store any CSS value, be it color, font stacks, width, padding, animation or transition values. Before we understand its syntax, let's first see why we need variables by looking at an example. I'm defining a heading, SAS variables and few paragraphs inside the body. Let's style them. I'll go to SCSS file. For H1, I'll give the color and font size of 2.5 rem. For the paragraph, I'm defining color, padding 2%, font size 1.2 rem and a font family. Let me duplicate these styles for the rest of the paragraphs as well. So all the paragraphs share similar styling. Now assume that a situation arises where I have to apply some changes in the styles. Traditionally, I will have to go through all these styling options individually to apply changes in them, which seems doable right now. But what if there is a bigger project with multiple elements that share same styles and you have to apply some minor changes to all of them. That is going through the individual option and applying changes to them, which is a huge task. This is where the SAS variables come in. To define them, we use the dollar symbol followed by a valid variable name. So let me give here dollar new padding, colon 1.5%. And let's add new property, for example, alignment. I will create another variable for alignment, say dollar text alignment colon center. You can define them anywhere, but generally they are defined at the top of the styles page. And now if I want to access them, I will give the text align property in H1 and instead of giving proper value that is center, I will give the variable name instead and you can see the alignment getting updated. Let's give padding as well. I will define the variable name that is dollar new padding instead of values. And you can see the padding getting updated. This is how the SAS variables are applied and you can create variables for every property available in CSS. While I open the CSS file, you can see the values are updated whenever the SAS file gets updated. One more thing I would like to discuss is that here we have declared variables like this, but when you are working on bigger projects, it's better to make a separate file for the variables, which we will see soon. SAS allows nesting of selectors, just like any other HTML code. When writing HTML code, you may have noticed that it has a clear nested and visual hierarchy. CSS on the other hand doesn't. Let's see a practical implementation. I will define a nav tag inside the body for defining the navigation links where I'll give the UL and four allies, for example, home, portfolio, about and contact. Now let's define the styles by nesting the selectors. I will first give the nav selector and inside the brackets, I'm defining the styles for UL. Giving list style none, margin zero and 4% and padding to zero. So this is how the nesting looks like. For CSS, the same thing would look like this. Let me click on watch SAS to execute the compiler and I'll further style the allies and anchor tag. For ally, I will display it as inline block, setting position as relative and giving top 40 pixels and left to 145 pixels. For anchor, I will give the color, setting display to block and giving padding 8 pixels and 12 pixels, border radius to 5% and text decoration none to remove the underlines. If I select the style, 
dot CSS file, you can see how the nav selector repeats itself for every style decoration. This is just the repeating of code lines which we avoided using nesting with SAS. Alright, back to the SAS file. I'll give a hover and focus pseudo classes, setting linear transition of one second and background color, and setting the active pseudo class as well, giving the background color, border color, and color. And we are ready with simple navbar menu with SCSS using nesting. So with SAS, you can nest the selectors in a way that follows the same visual hierarchy of HTML documents. Also remember that overuse of nesting rules will result in overqualified CSS that could prove hard to maintain and is generally considered a non-standard practice. The SAS or SCSS partials are the CSS files that contain small snippets of CSS code specific for a particular styling which is separated from the main style sheet for maintaining the CSS code better. These files can be used in another SAS file instead of writing the same styles again. Let's see an example. I'm going to create a simple sign up form so I'll define a heading first and then a form tag giving a division with the class name form field. Inside, I am defining a label for full name and an input field for it. Similarly, I will create three more labels and input that is email, password and button. Let's quickly style them. For heading, I am giving the font size 2rem, text align to center and color. Let me start the compiler as well. I'll click on watch SAS. Next, I'll style the form, setting the max width 500 pixels, padding 2 rem, box sizing to border box, margin auto, and a border. Styling all the fields now, going to display them as flex and a bottom margin of 1 rem. For label and input, setting some common styling, giving width 60%, padding 0.5 rem, box sizing to border box, setting the justify content property to space between. I can add this property as I have set the parent division that is form field as flex. And finally the font size 1.1 rem. I'll align all the labels to right and add a width of 30% to them. For input, I'll just give the border and border radius of 2%. And you can see the form. Now let's create a SCSS partial file. There are certain rules for creating or adding a partials to SCSS. First is the file name must start with an underscore. So let me create a file named underscore reset. Second rule is that the file name must have the extension of dot SCSS or dot SAS. So I'll give the extension as well. And finally, the third rule is that the file must be saved in the same path of root style sheet. It's possible to place partials in subfolders as well though. Okay, so let me define a reset file. I'll set box sizing to border box and margin padding to zero. And we are ready with our partial. Generally, SCSS partials are used for creating a CSS reset file but you can always define it with styling for various elements. Now to add a partials in SCSS, you have to use the at import statement before the file name. And this statement, you have to define it inside the main SCSS file. Note that we don't add the underscore and the extension for the partials when referencing it via at import statement. The SAS module system is a newer concept and an update which is added to SAS. It is an alternative to the at import rule and much better when compared to it. Instead of at import, we use the at use statement. 
while the current at import rule allows you to access the external packages and split your SAS into manageable partials, it has few limitations as well. So let's understand it by looking at an example. I'm defining a heading and some paragraphs with classes inside the document. Now inside the styles, for H1, I'm giving color, font size to 3RAM and text align center. For all the paragraphs, I'm giving the font size of 1.3RAM. Now I'm going to create two partials which we will import in main SAS file. The first file will be underscore new color one dot scss and the second file will be underscore new color two dot scss in the first file i'll define a variable dollar bg color having a color and in the second file as well i'll define the dollar bg color variable with a different color now let's import these two files in the main scss file and for the h1 i will change the color and will give the variable name here that is dollar bg color now observe the output and you can see the heading gets the color which we have assigned in the second file and not from the first file the reason behind this is the at import statement makes all the variables functions etc globally available so if i declare the same variable names in the different files and I import them, those variables get overridden. This also creates difficulty in finding exactly where the variable or function was defined. So an alternative to this approach is to define a module with the at use rule. So instead of at import, I'm going to use at use. By giving the at use rule, it's going to load the SES file as a module, which means now you can refer to its variable or functions in the main scss file with the namespace based on the file name so here instead of bg color i'll prefix it with the namespace that is the file name which contains the variable we want to assign the namespace and variable is separated by a dot and now you can see the color of the heading has changed Note that we are giving the file name only and not the extension. You don't need to specify that. SAS is smart enough and will figure it out for you. You can also change or remove the default namespace by specifying the name prefixed by as keyword at the time of import. So if I set the name of the second file as S, the default namespace gets changed to S, which is a kind of an alias for the module now to access the color you'll just have to specify the name instead of the namespace to remove the default namespace we set the asterisk sign now we can access them without specifying the namespace there are also some built-in modules which have to be imported explicitly in the file before using them and they are math color string list map selector and meta so again to summarize the at use rule is similar to at import rule but it comes with some noticeable differences like at use makes the variables and the functions available within the scope of the current file that is module that means it never adds them to the global scope this makes it easy to figure out where each name of your SAS file references comes from and it lets you add shorter names without any risk of collision. The at use lets you load your files only once which ensures that you don't end up accidentally duplicating your dependencies many times over. At use must appear at the beginning of your file and cannot be nested in style rules. In the further updates, SES is planning to completely deprecate the use of at import rule as the at use is much better alternative. Now let's talk about a question and that is what are modules in SAS? SAS modules system or SAS module is a feature which lets you import the SAS file to the main SCSS file by using the at use statement. By importing the file with at use, 
you are importing the file as a module to which you have access and can be used anywhere inside the style sheet. It does share similar functionality when compared with at import statement but is a much better alternative than at import. Mixins is one of the most used and important features of SAS. It allows you to define the styles which you can further reuse throughout the style sheet. Mixins works as a function in SAS. That means you can pass CSS properties as arguments inside them, thus making it look more cleaner and manageable. So by using mixins, you can reduce the writing of the same code lines over and over. In the same code that we saw in previous lecture, I am creating a mixin by giving at mixin rule. Every mixin is assigned with a name, so I will say here text settings. And inside I will declare some CSS properties which I want to apply on the elements. I'll give padding 1.5 rem, text align to center and text transform uppercase. So this is how a mixin is defined. Now to include this mixin inside any selector, we use the at include rule. Let me give at include and the name of the mixin. And you can see the styles are getting applied on the paragraph. If you look at the CSS file, it looks like any other normal CSS. You can also pass arguments to mixins. Let's say I want to pass width and height as arguments. Then inside the brackets, I will create variables for width and height passed as the arguments. Now when we define the properties, we assign them with the variable names instead of values. That's it. And when you want to use them, we specify the argument values with at include rule. And you can see the width and height is getting applied on the paragraph. If you observe the CSS file, the width and height are included in the styles. So this is how mixins are created and used. However, in a standard practice when using mixins, instead of defining them in the main SCSS file, we create a separate file for it and import it. Let me create a new file called mixins.scss. And I'll move the mixin rule which we defined in the main file to mixins.scss file. And I'll just import it by using the at use rule. Notice that I have removed the namespace of the mixin file by adding an asterisk sign. This is important and it allows you to include mixin files in SAS without giving any namespace. So to summarize, mixins help to group different styling options for reusing them in a style sheets. You can create a mixin by giving the at mixin rule followed by the name of the mixin and to use that mixin as a CSS declaration. The at include rule is used followed by the name of the mixin. This reminds me a relative question often asked what are mixins? So mixins are basically functions like facility in CSS where you define a process with a name and you can pass the arguments to those mixins. Inheritance is the object oriented programming concept which lets the child element inherit properties of its parent element. This similar functionality is provided by SAS as well. When designing a page, let's say there are certain set of style rules in one class that should be applied to another class as well along with the new class having its own set of styles. Ideally from what we have seen until now, we have used the BEM methodology for defining the classes and have shared the styles within the selectors. But that too, at a certain stage, it can create cluttered HTML, prone to errors from forgetting to include both classes and can bring non-semantic style concerns into your markup. This is where the inheritance comes in. 
with the use of at extend rule you can inherit the styles from one class to another let's practically see it i'm going to define three headings that is h1 h2 and h3 with class name class 1 2 and 3 now in the style scss let me give some general styling for h1 the font size i'll say 2 rem text align to left and color now let's say i want to apply these styles in the second heading as well so rather than copying and pasting them or rewriting them i'll extend these properties by defining at extend rule followed by the selector or class name you want to extend and you can see it inherits the above properties also you can notice that we haven't defined the elements in a parent child hierarchy so remember to inherit any class properties it's not a necessity to have a parent child relationship we can also override and add new properties to the inherited class like here let me override the text align property i'll give center and will add a padding of 40 pixels and you can see the result there is also a selector which is used specifically with the at extend rule and that is the placeholder selector percentage this is a special type of selector and it works like any other class or id selectors except that it is denoted by a percentage sign they are meant to be used with the at extend directive so let me create a selector using percentage i'll give the name hover on heading and inside i will define colon hover pseudo class giving the color transition of 2 seconds linear and cursor as pointer in sas there is also a selector denoted by ampersand symbol it is mainly used in nested selectors so refer the selectors in which it is defined we will understand this by looking at the output let me first set properties of the third heading as well here i am going to extend the properties of the second heading and with a comma separator i will define the placeholder selector as well i'll set the padding to 0 and text align to right now when i hover on the third heading you can see the hover effect this is the charm of the ampersand selector so what it does is when it is assigned inside the selector the ampersand applies those properties to that selector if i check the css file you can see the hover is assigned to the third heading you can also notice the inheritance declaration in the css format the placeholder selector is not included in css in fact any complex selector the ones between the commas as well that even contains a placeholder selector isn't included in the css nor is any style rule whose selectors contain placeholders so unlike class selectors placeholders don't clutter up the css if they aren't extended this is just their way of functioning in sas they are very useful when writing a sas library where each style rule may or may not be used sas supports various mathematical and logical operators for working with different values as you can see these are the various lists of operators which are used with sas so let's implement an example and see how you can use a few of them i've defined a heading with a class name as main heading inside the body now for styling i'll give font size of 3 rem text align to center color and padding but instead of giving a standard value for padding let me give it like i'll say 20 pixels plus 120 pixels sas allows you to define the values for the properties like this as well so the padding of 140 pixels is defined to the heading let me show you the css file and you can see the padding is 140 pixels but the problem arises when you define the values with different units for example if i change 20 pixels to 2m 
then no change will be seen on the padding as CSS cannot compile this type of mixup units. And this goes for all the operators. If I want to define it in a more complex way, let me define it like this where I say 120 pixels divide by 3 pixels inside the brackets plus 0.2 pixels. Then the padding of 40.2 pixels will be applied on the heading. Let me change the font size as well. This time I'll multiply the values. I'll give 1.2 into 4.2 rem divided by 0.7. And you can see the overall font size is now 7.2 rem. Let me check that in the CSS file as well. And there you see it. Not only this, you can also create a variable and assign operators on it as well. Let me create a variable for width. I'll say dollar new width 150 pixels. And now I will define the width like this. Inside the brackets, I'll give new width divide by 60 pixels and multiply by 20%. So this is also a valid syntax approach for assigning values to the property. Remember that the values inside the brackets are evaluated first as they have greater priority than rest. If you look at the CSS file, you have the width. Now we know the fundamentals of SAS. Let's try to create a responsive sidebar with it. Let me show you the preview first. So this is what we are trying to achieve. Let's begin. Inside the body, I will create a container division named sidebar wrapper. Defining a header first, so I will create a division named sidebar wrapper underscore header. I'm going to keep using the name of the container division for all the subdivisions we define. I'll explain the reason behind it when we style the elements. I will create a division for the header logo as well as the title. HTML and CSS tutorials. I'll give the SVG path for the logo and we can see the logo now. I'll change its width and height to 35. Next, defining two more subdivisions following the parent child hierarchy that is underscore list and underscore list underscore items that is list items. Inside the list items, I'll give two divisions. First will be for the image that is the logo and second will be for the title. Let me first copy this part and we'll define it four more times. Now setting the title as dashboard and we'll give the SVG path for the image. I'll set the title as chat for this division and we'll set the image as well. Next title is team and setting its image as well. Second last title will be products and its related logo. And the last title will be reviews and I'll set its related image here as well. We are done with the HTML part. Now let's style them. I'll create an index.scss file. First, I will set the global values by using the asterisk. I'll give margin and padding zero and font family. For the body, I'll just set the heights as 100VH and a background. Now let's style the sidebar. I'll style the wrapper first, giving the width 300 pixels, height 100% and the linear gradient background. Then for header, I will give ampersand underscore header. This is where giving the proper naming conventions is useful. Ampersand in SAS is used for nesting to avoid repetition of code. So specifying an ampersand will always refer to its parent selector, which is the wrapper class in our case. So specifying the ampersand allows us to place the parent selector whenever we need it inside the child selector. Let's style it now. I'll set the display as flex padding 16 pixels and again 16 pixels font size to 1.3 m text aligned to center adding a linear background and setting the gap of 15 pixels similarly for the title i will give ampersand underscore 
HTML CSS tutorial. Setting the text color as white. Next is the list. I will give ampersand underscore list. Setting color as white. Margin top to 12 pixels. Then for the items, I'll set the display to flex. Padding 12 pixels and 18 pixels. A gap of 10 pixels. And cursor to pointer and also the text color. For the list title, I'll set the margin top to 2 pixels. This aligns them with their respective logos. Finally, a hover on the items. I'll just give a background. Let me also set a transition. I'll give all 0.5 seconds and ease. The only thing now remains is to make this responsive. But before that, there is an important property I would like to apply, and that is the user select property. This property specifies whether the text of an element can be selected. In some web browsers, if you double click on the text, it will get selected or highlighted, like here. If I double click on the text or try to select all the text, you can see it is getting selected. To avoid this, we set the user select property to none. So let me do that. Back to the globals, I'll give the user select to none. And now you can see if I try to select the text, the browser won't let me. So this is really a good feature to add in your web layouts. By any chance, if it shows any error, that means that this property is not compatible with your current browser. In that case, you need to specify vendor prefixes for your browser. And now to make it responsive, I will set breakpoint using the at media query, but in a mix in file, just so to make the code more maintainable and readable. Let me create a mixins.scss file, and inside, I will create a mixin by giving at mixin rule, naming it as mobile view, setting the max width of 680 pixels, and inside it, I'll place the add content rule. Now this rule, that is the content directive, is a simple way to reduce the repetitive code lines and allows an easier way for reusing and applying the changes throughout the code base. This rule is mostly used in media queries and keyframes. So by placing this rule, I can set any properties and as many as I want for the media rule it's going to set those properties inside without any clutter. So inside the index scss file, let me import the mixins. I'll include the media query inside the wrapper. By using the at include rule, I'll set the width to 64 pixels. So this property is taken by the at content rule. Handy, isn't it? I'll include the media query for the header as well. We will set the display to none as I want only the logo should appear when being viewed on a mobile. Same thing goes for all the titles. I'll set the display to none here as well. And we are ready with responsive sidebar menu with SAS. Keep on practicing and try to create more amazing menu designs and web layouts on your own as that's the only way to master SAS and CSS for sure.